Hi guys, welcome to Empowerin. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to go over the skeletal muscle cells. We are going to learn how the skeletal muscle cells have nerves, fibers, blood vessels, and connective tissues. This video is going to be jam-packed with information because we're also going to take a microscopic look at the skeletal muscle. This is the 17th video in this Anatomy 101 video series, Skeletal Muscles. In this section, we are delving deeper into the parts and functions of skeletal muscles. These muscles attached to the bones can be completely identified as skeletal striated voluntary muscles. But you will be extremely fascinated at how complicated their structure is. First of all, skeletal muscles have nerves, muscle fibers, blood vessels, and connective tissues. Let's see, one example of skeletal muscle is the bicep. You know, the one we flex to make our arm muscles bulge. Now this bicep is composed of hundreds, even thousands of cylindrical shaped cells called muscle fibers, which are surrounded by a connective tissue called endomyosin. The muscle fibers will be grouped together in bundles or compartments called fascicles. The fascicles will determine the strength, shape, and range of motion and the form of the skeletal muscle. If each muscle fiber is covered by endomyosin, remember that each compartment on the other hand is protected by another connective tissue called perimyosin. Now the compartments or bundles will come together to form the biceps and will now be covered by the connective tissue called the epimyosin. To summarize, there will be an epimyosin on the outermost layer of the skeletal muscle. Then, the perimyosin will cover each bundle of muscle fibers. Now, each muscle fiber will be protected by another type of connective tissue, called the endomyosin. Another interesting fact, all these three connective tissues will extend beyond the flesh of the muscle to form a thick, rope-like structure called tendons or a flat sheet called eponeurosis. Commonly, we refer to the tendons as the structure responsible for muscle bone attachment. However, there are times when eponeurosis takes the tendon's place because it can cover wider areas. You see, since muscle needs contraction to move and movement may happen because of a stimulus or because of our own commands, there must be nerves present in the skeletal muscle. Otherwise, where would the impulse come from? Now, each nerve is usually accompanied by an artery or vein, which will supply the muscle's oxygen via circulation. Muscle attachment is the location of the bone where the muscle is attached. If bones are attached to bones via ligaments, we have mentioned that muscles attach to bones via the tendon or eponeurosis. In muscle attachment, there is what we call as origin and insertion. When the muscle contracts, one side moves and the other side remains stationary. Attachment can happen on both sides. It is the origin when the muscle is attached to the stationary end. As discussed earlier, muscle fibers are actually cells. Muscle fibers have a plasma membrane, which we call a sarcolemma. This is the covering of the fiber itself and is different from the connective tissue endomyosum. Inside the muscle fiber is the cytoplasm, but we call it the sarcoplasm. In the sarcoplasm are the organelles like mitochondria and nucleus. The most notable thing that can be found in the sarcoplasm is the myofibrils. These are cylindrical protein structures that run from one end of the fiber to the other. There could easily be hundreds to thousands of myofibrils in each cell, making them so packed inside that they squish the organelles and push the nucleus close to the sarcolemma so that it is more visible. This is why skeletal muscles appear to be multinucleated. The myofibrils, which occupy almost 80% of the muscle fiber, are contractile elements. Let me know and also make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you become a member of my channel because I've uploaded my program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology. So, can't wait to see you guys in the next video and I will see you then. Love you. Bye.